Having looked at how the film works and what it's about, it's now time to turn our attention to the reception the film received. Few films have divided an audience to such a degree. To non-horror fans, it's almost universally reviled as a brutal display of filmmaking gone wrong, the cruelest kind of cinematic excess that appeals to the worst elements in the dregs of society. Even among some of the most ardent horror fans, there's a massive division in whether this movie is a travesty or a triumph. Prior to releasing Cannibal Holocaust, Sergio Leon gave Diodata some prophetic words, simultaneously recognising his achievement while also voicing concern not only about the film's content, but the potential legal trouble it would bring for his friend. He wrote, Dear Ruggiero, what a movie. The second part is a masterpiece of cinematographic realism, but everything seems so real, and I think you will get trouble with all the world. And oh boy, was he ever on the mark with that assessment. When it got its cinematic release in Italy, Cannibal Holocaust enjoyed enormous unprecedented box office success, but just ten days later it suffered the wrath of the law, with Diodato being charged with the deaths of the filmmakers in the film, a rumour that had been courted by the director as part of the marketing of the film. After recalling the actors who were under contract to stay out of the public eye for a year, those charges were dropped, but Diodato was then prosecuted under a law prohibiting cruelty to animals, and the courts got their prosecution. The film was then banned in its home country for four years while Diodato fought the ban and eventually got an uncut release. However, in many other countries it was not so fortunate. In the UK, Cannibal Holocaust became one of the figurehead titles in the wake of the video Nasty Scare and soon was successfully prosecuted for obscenity in the UK after an apparent and wonderfully exploitative marketing stunt of sending a copy of the film to the Festival of Light along with a letter vigorously complaining about the film. The UK in particular has been very heavy handed with Cannibal Holocaust and aside from the pressure put on the BBFC to enforce a ban on the film, either in its full uncut form or in its pre-cut version that had originally been released in this country, the Video Recordings Act of 1984, now deceased, had tied video recordings to various pieces of legislation that governed cinematic releases, not least the Obscene Publications Acts of 1959 and 1964, and most significantly in this case the Cinematographic Films Animals Act of 1937. Where these particular pieces of legislation applied, now reapplied in the form of the Video Recordings Act of 2010, Cannibal Holocaust cannot be released in this country uncut, most clearly because of its breach of the Cinematographic Act of 1937 in respect to the animal cruelty and the possible breach of the OPA in regards to, most obviously, the ritualistic punishment of the woman by the river, amongst other scenes. This scene in particular, other than the animal deaths, gained most of the cuts chiefly because of the nudity, which, although throughout the movie is never really prurient, it's always much more of a matter of fact. It is, however, total and unabashed. This, combined with the sexual violence being committed in the scene and the nature of the shots, had caused the BBFC to require cuts to remove some of the more obvious shots of genitalia and the method of her torture. Overall, the cuts remove nearly all the visuals of the sexual violence and related nudity and animal cruelty, resulting in over five minutes of material being excised from the film. Most controversial, of course, and rather ironically so considering the other content in this film, is the animal cruelty. Several scenes were shot with a total of seven animals being killed, including the infamous turtle, a snake, a spider, two monkeys, a pig, and most controversially, a cotamundi, that's misidentified as a muskrat. Now, before I continue, I want to state in no uncertain terms that I feel it was not right to kill these animals for the sake of a movie. However, I offer a few words of defence for Diodato's actions. Firstly, most of the animals that were killed were consumed. Secondly, they died a fairly clean death, with the exception of the Cotamundi, whose horribly botched slaughter at the hands of an incompetent actor was deeply cruel and unnecessarily protracted. However you feel about the deaths of the animals, it's certainly not unprecedented not only in Italy, but also in Hollywood, though it's rather more explicit here. Does that make it right? Of course not, but it's helpful to keep things in perspective. So for those who feel Diodato should be condemned to death for this, and now I've actually seen people advocating his murder for this, then please feel free to boycott all Disney products because of the hundreds of lemmings they killed deliberately while making White Wilderness, and while we're at it, all electrical products and films. Thomas Edison used both his competitor's product AC electricity and his invention, the motion picture camera, to facilitate and film the electrocution of Topsy the Elephant in 1903. This was simply one recorded event. He did this many times. The original Ben-Hur resulted in several horses' deaths, and many films have caused the death or suffering of animals since then. Again, this doesn't make it right. However, the film does draw extra attention to that aspect, 
simply because of its explicitness in that respect. What is deeply ironic is that the genuine human deaths that are included in this film in the last road footage is either not mentioned or deemed okay by the very same people who so vigorously denounce the animal suffering. This doesn't help you look sane or humane people. No doubt I'll get some flack for this despite me making it clear that the practice of killing animals for entertainment is wrong. Diodato was punished by the law as was United Artists and thankfully this seems to be a thing of the past now. The complaint that this film is racist is another common attack, based as it is on the depiction of the natives. However, I would counter even that by pointing out that this film is not trying to portray these people as they are in reality. The natives are really more of a metaphorical device. True, it's not the most flattering depiction, but there's a functionality to the role that they play that demands the primitive, the polar opposite of the society that we know. In order to demonstrate contrast and identify the horrific behaviour of the supposed civilised westerners, if this film is critical of anything, it's Western society. If it accuses or damns anyone, it's the aliens to this green inferno. The natives are not reviled or ridiculed in this film any more than they are lauded or celebrated. Diodato does rather overdo the primitive behaviour of the natives, and if there's one thing he's guilty of, it would be making a rather sensationalist build-up, including the rather brutal rituals of the natives, which seem to be concentrated on rather intently. I say this because this is where the charge that Diodato is guilty of what he condemns comes from, and to some not insignificant extent he is. Sensationalism was definitely a part of this film's construct. This however should not render the integrity of the underlying message null and void. For all its faults and it has a few to say the least, Cannibal Holocaust stands as one of the most ferociously original and powerful films. It makes no effort to spare the feelings of the audience, and its effectiveness in doing what it does means that for many this essentially shoots itself in the foot somewhat. The fact that this is so upsetting to so many, that the meaning gets buried in the controversial aspects of the film, that the imagery is too potent for so many to endure or accept, means that what is a very smart, interesting, and even now relevant story is inaccessible to a significant portion of the public. This said, would any of us, detractors or supporters of this film, be talking about this film to this day, if not for the extreme nature of Diodato's creation. The sensational elements of this film simultaneously feed and poison this film. It's a true double-edged sword that keeps the debate uh, about this film alive. Wherever you stand on the excesses of this film, it's an undeniably influential movie that, if you can get beyond its more extreme elements, is a deeply fascinating and impressive, if somewhat brutal and disturbing film.